In part two of lecture five, we will discuss external storage. Magnetic storage is the oldest form of external storage for computers, going back all the way to the UNIFAC, the first commercial computer. It involves electromagnets magnetizing, demagnetizing, and sensing the magnetization or lack of it. It is used heavily in enterprise computer systems. Magnetic storage uses a surface that is ceramic or aluminum, in the case of hard disks, or mylar, in the case of floppy disks, that is embedded with iron oxide compounds. While you can have a magnetic disk with only one surface, Many magnetic disks have multiple platters, as these disks are known, that are stacked one on top of another. While magnetic tape and magnetic disks can be removable and replaceable, most hard disk drives are sealed, and the disk or disks inside cannot be easily replaced. The read-write heads are electromagnets, when they write on the disk, a current passing through the head magnetizes a spot on the surface. When they read the disk, passing over a magnetized spot induces a small current in the electromagnet. When these particles are scattered in different orientations, there is no magnetization. A magnetic field induced in the read-write head causes them to be aligned, creating a field that is oriented toward either a north pole or a south pole. This represents zero or one, respectively. Reading and writing from a magnetic disk is not instantaneous, although it is very fast. For one thing, the read-write head has to be moved into the right position over the right track. Access time refers to exactly that. The arm holding the read-write head has to move into position. But the disk needs to rotate to the right part of that track. And then the data needs to be read or written. The time that this takes is called the data transfer rate the amount of data that can be read or written per second. Over the last two and a half decades, optical storage has become commonplace. The first optical technology to become popular was the compact disc, whose surface has a series of pits and lands. Pits are depressions in the surface that cause the laser beam to reflect at an odd angle. The lands are smooth surfaces where the beam is reflected at a true angle. While CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray discs all use the same basic technology, there are differences in the storage capacities. CDs are designed to hold 74 minutes of recorded music or 650 megabytes of data. This was later improved to handle 80 minutes of music or 700 megabytes of data. You may wonder why it has an unusual value for the maximum amount of music. When Philips Corporation started developing the CD, their mandate was to achieve a minimum of 74 minutes to allow the CEO to listen to all of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony without having to change a disc or turn it over. And it typically takes a little over 70 minutes to play the whole work. DVDs have a data capacity of about 4.7 gigabytes. A double-sided DVD can hold 8.5 gigabytes. DVDs were developed specifically 
for recording full-length feature films, and this is why the capacity is so much larger than CDs. Blu-ray discs can store 25 gigabytes and needs the extra capacity to store high-definition movies. Their capacities and the age of these technologies play a role in their cost. CDs with the smallest capacity and being the oldest are the least expensive at 15 cents per disc. DVDs and Blu-ray, which have greater capacities and are newer, cost 25 and 50 cents respectively. These technologies all come in three categories read-only, recordable, and rewritable. Read-only discs store data permanently. What is stored on the disc cannot be changed. That means you can't add to it either. The data on the disc that tells the computer what is stored on it and where it is written on the disc can't be changed either. Recordable discs have a photosensitive dye that changes color when a laser beam is applied to it. While these can be recorded by a user's PC, they can't be changed. So it's recordable, but not erasable. Rewritable discs use a metal alloy instead of the dye. These alloys change their reflective properties when the laser heats the surface. Solid state memory is fairly new. Technology that stores data in circuitry that is erasable and rewritable. There are no moving parts, no disk spinning, or tape to stream by a read-write head. Most importantly, it's non-volatile. When the electricity is turned off, it still holds the data. Memory cards are one example of solid-state memory. There are different standards for them, with SDR secured digital cards and micro SD cards being one of the more popular ones. They are especially useful in transferring files from digital cameras and media players to computers. Another use of solid state storage technology is a solid state drive. In a solid state drive, Flash memory is used as a substitute for a hard disk drive. Similarly, it can also be used as a USB flash drive, which is removable and can be used easily to transport data from one computer to another. Solid state drives are widely used on smartphones and tablets. They were also used on netbooks, small computers, used primarily to surf the web. Netbooks are no longer common because tablets have replaced them. Solid state drives cost about 35 cents per gigabyte of storage. Another form of storage that has become popular is cloud storage. The cloud got its name from computer systems that have shown large-scale enterprise storage as a cloud to indicate that their exact location and implementation is usually unknown to end users. They are available not just as a private data resource, but as a service available over the internet. Examples of cloud storage services include Google Drive, Apple iCloud, Microsoft OneDrive, and Dropbox. Some cloud implementations include a synchronization feature that will automatically backup files stored on a local device. This is similar to when programs like Microsoft Word periodically back up your document while you're creating it so you have a backup if your computer crashes. There are concerns that users need to keep in mind when using cloud computing services. 
These include security and privacy risks, because the more your data travels through networks, there are more opportunities for hackers and government agencies to intercept it. As reliable as cloud services may be, they are still susceptible to power outages and power surges, which can cut off your access to your data for a period of time. And worse yet, if a cloud storage provider goes out of business, you can completely and possibly permanently lose the data you have stored using their service.